Hi guys, so this is a follow-up video regarding the integration between BreezeCS and HandKey. Um, it's pretty much complete now with regards to BreezeCS integration. Um, needs to do a final bit of testing, but pretty much done. So I'm just going to roll run through the physical setup of the device and along with um, showing you how it works. So once we've done the initial setup, uh, we will flip to picture in picture so you can see the screen uh, along with me pushing buttons and presenting hands to the reader. So in its current form, I've already set it up, but we'll, we'll default it in a second and, and run through it. So <clears throat> starting from the back, so if I just spin it round, uh, we'll notice on the back that we've got various connections. Uh, the BreeCS integration relies on the TCP IP connection, uh, only to the first unit, uh, the unit that will be used as enrollment, uh, which will be sitting in most likely the same room in which the PC is for BreeCS and Net2. So we've just got our, our Ethernet cable there with an Ethernet module plugged in. This bottom board, um, this whole plate at the back can come off with the uh, screws around the sides. And then this bottom board can just slide out and then you can just um, plug in this Ethernet module straight into it. <clears throat> uh, just next to that is our Wigan data route and it's been set up for sending clock and data out um, to the Net2 controller, so it is actually wired into a Net2 controller. Um, again, I'll put a reader beside that so you can see that flash. Um, and then just after that is our power connection in the corner. I'm just using a, a pushing connector, obviously you could just hardwire it straight into those terminals. And here it would be our RS422 network out from the enrollment reader, being this one, to the readers that will be installed at the turnstile. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video, I'll um, factory default and then I'll run through the setup procedure. So factory default the unit, all you need to do is power it down and right tucked in here is a little uh, button to do a hard reset. So you can just push that button there, um, hold it down and then apply power and then the unit will give you an option to, to um, do a hard reset and, and wipe everything. Uh, I would advise doing this um, once you've installed the uh, module because I did find the I did have a bit of corrupt data um, when I first initially tried to set it up until I done that hard reset and then it all worked fine after that. So I'll uh, I'll power it down. I'll push that button and then I'll resume uh, and then run through the menus. So I done a pie cycle. Um, I held the button on the back and then we're presented with the menu to reset everything or reset just data. In this instance, I'll just select number nine for all. A uh, cold boot and then it will run through the motions and boot up. Um, you can just make sure that your Ethernet cable is plugged into your network, blah blah blah, and it will uh, search for the Ethernet adapter and just give you some random rubbish IP address and which you can go into the menus after and just set what you want. So, now it's booted. Obviously it's a cold reboot, so there's, there's no one in the, in the unit at all. It's completely back to factory settings. There are five menus on this system um, from scratch, i.e. no one's registered. You can access any of the menus without pressing it in the hands, you can just push clear and enter and then push the menu number that you want and push enter. In this instance I want menu 2 so I'll push 2 and I'll push enter and it will take me straight into the menu. So set language no because um, we're already displaying English. Set the day format yes I want it as um, day month year so I'll push the no key to change to the option that I want then I'll select yes to confirm. Uh, no, we've done the date format. Set the date and time. Yes, please. Um, the month is 03. Push yes. The day is 11. Push yes. The year is 15. Push yes. The hour is 13, as in 1 o'clock. And the minute is 18. Push yes. So now we've set the date and time. We say no, we don't want to do that. We want to move on. ID length, no need to worry about that. Output mode, um, yes. Obviously, it wouldn't matter so much on the enrollment reader, but for readers by the turnstile, you would need to set your output mode. I say, yes, I want to sell it. Um, I don't want lock on auxiliary um, as a relay output. I want it connected to um, the Paxton Net 2 controller. So I push no, and it will display card reader output. I say, yes. So we've done that, and there's no to move on. We set the facility. We say, yes, we want the facility to be zero. So which means when we enrol each of the users, um, their ID number will correspond to their Wigan number. So user 1 um, will output Wigan ID 1, 2 will output 2, so on and so forth. Push yes to that. 
lock shunt time no auxiliary out control again it's up to you not in this instance uh, set the reader mode yes because we're connecting this unit to uh, the BreCS software we want um, via the uh, TCP IP connection we want to set this to remote otherwise it will not connect so we set this to remote and we say yes push no to move on set serial we say yes this is where we set the IP address to connect to the unit and send data to it um, you just give it the IP address that you want to set uh, for your switch or if you've got um, a router with internet connectivity you might want to adjust your DHCP settings so you can issue, issue this with an address outside of the DHCP server too long so set serial yes in this instance I'm using 192.168 dot zero dot two four six but being zero we have to do zero 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 um, and then two four six because I've got no intention of accessing this over the internet I can just set the gateway to all zeros that makes no difference and I can set the bits the host bits being the um, <clears throat> the subnet mask just to zero uh, bald it doesn't matter, we'll just say yes to confirm don't need a GRS code, you might but I don't print options, no beep, I don't want to set up, right? no language, so we're back to the beginning so we now can push clear it will go back to ready um, correct time and correct date so now this unit is now ready to connect to the software and have um, users um, sent to it via the software um, so what I do is again is I pause this video and I'll get a picture in picture so you can see the software um, this handkey unit along with a Paxton um, reader so you can see the light flashing on it as and when access is granted on the net2 side of things okay see you in a sec okay so following on um, from the initial setup of the handkey reader itself so that's now done and dusted um, just run through the integration with Breezes itself um, as we can see picture in picture got the handkey unit in front of us uh, along with a Paxton Net2 reader just so we can see that uh, green light flash to say that access was granted as far as the access control side of things is concerned to the integration um, so this is connected, the handkey is just wired out of the Wigan output straight to the ACU and obviously it's just configured as 26 bit Wigand um, so jumping over to the software um, the first thing you need to do is set the IP address within the software so that it knows where um, to connect to you can do that by coming to BreezeCS and going to the advanced view, clicking on the options menu and selecting the connector IP address. Um, I've already filled this in from earlier, you just type in the IP address in here that you set earlier in the, the Hanky unit itself and you can ping that IP address just to make sure it responds. If it does it turns green, if not it turns red. We can just click OK to that and that will uh, save that user. From previous testing we had two users. Um, 1523 and 1524 um, which was Kian and John just confirm that these users are not in the system they have been deleted 1523 invalid 1524 invalid so there's no users currently enrolled so if we go to a specific user and edit that user by double clicking we can see that the bottom section of the um, add edit window has changed uh, offset to the left is card administration which is uh, specifically for card and token numbers where you can physically enter a number in yourself if you're just using standard um, Paxton readers and you've also got the ability to delete token numbers uh, that have been put in before uh, we'll just delete that one out just, just so there's nothing in the list and then moving on from that we've got a section dedicated to hand key and as before um, a section for IEVO two different buttons for hand key in the respect of enrollment one to add a, a normal user and one to add one with authority the only difference being is that users with authority can access the menu on the hanky unit itself uh, and normal users obviously can't they're just just access control but just to point out that if you only enroll normal users and do not enroll any users that have authority then all users have authority that's built into the firmware on the hanky you can't change that so the idea being is that you can register a um, a few people on site such as managers and supervisors that do have access to the menu system and everyone else would be normal and then a third button just to delete um, any users that you've already added 
uh, to that to that um, hanker unit itself. So in this instance, we'll just select normal. It's just prompting us to say make any desired changes. And once you're happy, click save, and then the um, software will connect to the unit and prompt us to uh, scan our hand. So it's now connected and it's asking us to scan our hand. We'll scan it. Um, just follow the on-screen, or shall I say, on the the uh, screen on the unit steps to scan the hand three times. It's now ready, and the software's prompted that the enrollment was successful, and the ID of this user is one five two four. So if we go to the unit one five two four, enter, present a hand to the unit. Access was granted. Green light flashes on the Paxton reader and we can see from the events that access was permitted and obviously if your ACU was connected to a turnstile the relay would have clicked and um, allowed you to pass through that turnstile so in, in addition to being able to add and delete hand key items um, when you uh, add or edit a user I've also done a right click context menu so in this instance, rather than clicking the delete button here, I'll show you the context menu. So any user that's got um, that you want to enrol an IEVO or hand key item in or delete, you can just right click that user now. You can still click update or double click, it's up to you. You can borrow a user directly. Options for IEVO to scan a fingerprint and manage, and obviously ones for the hand key. Same as before, three options, enrol normal, enrol with authority, or delete. So in this instance, we'll delete this user from the hand key reader itself, um, which was the user we just used to clock in. So delete, it will connect to the unit. <coughs> it will delete that user from the hand key itself. And away we go, we're done. So now uh, user 1524, or token number 1524, which is associated to key and reins, um, is no longer valid and has been removed from the unit. So if we try to access site 1524, enter, we can see that it just beeps at us uh, to say that access, um, there is no such user, so you, you can't present your hand. Um, so that's it really, the IEVO, not IEVO, sorry, hand key integration is um, pretty much done and dusted. The only thing I need to just double confirm and test is that when we are um, connecting multiple units to the system, that all of those units um, get synchronized so if I add a user to the enrollment uh, station that that will then pass those details on and if I delete um, it will delete those users from the turnstiles so the idea being with is that you've got a TCP IP connection from the PC in which the network uh, the network in which the PC is on connected to your hand key reader via the TCP IP Ethernet module and then from that module from that hand key reader you can just daisy chain RS422 um, to the other readers um, that we placed at the turnstile. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Speak to you.